Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. I am just very happy to be with you this morning or evening if it's uh, you've been working and you're coming back and looking at this. We are going to do a little program today on Be Happy. <laughs> it's one of the little, it's actually called the Honey Bee Gnomes. I think many of you know that gnomes have become very popular throughout the uh, quilting and the uh, sewing industry. And so, and not just the sewing industry, I think there's a lot of people that like these little gnomes. So we're gonna talk about them and we're gonna show you a fun little project that I think you'll enjoy. But before I get started, I wanna show you um, the quilt behind me. Uh, last week, uh, and it's on our YouTube channel, and by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you so many of you. We hit our, can I say what we hit? We hit our 5,000 mark <laughs> of, of subscribe people that are really watching every week. And yeah, make sure you do subscribe and like. Um, I had to do it too, and it was like, oh, and, you know, I had to do these accounts. It isn't that hard. If I can do it, you guys can do it. And I want to thank you for supporting us. We can do more programs like this, the more people that support us. Again, they're free. You don't have to do anything other than just subscribe. So um, thanks so much for getting those numbers up. Who would ever have thought back in the beginning days of COVID, some of you, I know many of you were watching me every single day. Who would ever think now we've got at least 5,000 that are really enjoying and giving me lots of good ideas and tips. And I do listen to them and I do appreciate your comments back. So what I'm standing in front of, because last week I did an interview with Ricky Timms, who is just a delight. I can't even tell you. And then when we were talking to him early, he would be singing, you know, he's got this wonderful voice. He's a musician in his past life, well, he still is. And this is his quilt that is, um, we have all the fabrics for it. It's the traditional quilt. I love this little Scotty dog here, <laughs> thank you. And there's the, um, the little ribbon and there's the uh, windmill and I love the points and the, look at the sunbonnet Sue. I mean, just precious things. And if you look at the border around the outside, I'll step away so you can see it. Can you see, uh, Nick, I don't know if you can get up there, but that little tiny border that is all the way around the edge is a very, very small little um, point, a little binding that just makes the quilt. It just is just precious. I absolutely love what he does. And that's very uh, indicative of what Ricky does. Who made this quilt? Sue Ellen <laughs> made this quilt. She just does such a great job. She does our modern quilting and oh, she does a lot of our classes, but this quilt is just stunning. And uh, you, we do have fabric and that's gonna be the reason that I'm bringing it up too. We um, bought enough for the Ricky Tim's event and then we said if we had leftovers, we would give you a sale. So any of you that are watching this video, all you have to do is call the store and there's a huge sale on whatever's left. I think there's a little bit of every one of his, maybe a couple have been sold out, but I hope you get to take advantage of it. It's a great bargain and uh, we'll give you, and if you haven't watched his, read his book, um, Lizzie is, I mean, she's just darling. It's just a really, really cute um, thing that he's doing. And I guess there's gonna be a sequel, which I'm kind of happy about. So. As I said, there are some many, many things happening, and I wanted to start with this, but I also want to give you some door prizes, right? Free? Love it, love it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> have you heard of the Daily Bread before? This is this one actually is Kay England's. It's the Bowtie Pasta, and she makes these little, and now I thought I would never do this, but I really had fun with these. You can put, you can make them big too, but you can make them small. You can put them into placemats. You can make a big quilt if you want, but these little um, informational things on her package and her kits, this one is called um, croutons. <laughs> it's just darling. And I don't even know how much they are, but they're, you know, she's put them together and it's her pattern. And we're gonna give about five or six of these so um, that's for the first part, but I have some other goodies that we're gonna give you to it. And the way you get the free product, now Nick, can you tell them what, how they, what, what do they have to do? <laughs> they have to just 
all you have to do is dial the phone number and uh, then or punch in the phone number and then you will be able to go ahead the first uh, and it doesn't necessarily be the first ones in there um, whoever you get if they have a, a, a free gift left for you um, you'll get it they'll put your name on it you do have to pick it up within a week we won't leave it longer than a week because we have so many pickups and if you can't get it within a week then it'll go back into stock otherwise um, you can pay a small sh shipping charge and they'll just ship it out to you okay let's start with our project because I want you to really get excited about this now these little gnomes that I'm talking about, and I have it in a book here. I'm going to take out the first one to show you what I'm really having fun with. And Nick, is this the better place to put it for you? It says, it, see the little guy here with his little stick for the honey pot and the welcome friend. And you're going to see mine, which is over here. Um, this is on the jacket. And actually, I don't know how that happened, but somehow I see on this picture, the honey pot is a darker turquoise almost, and mine's the lighter, and the dark is the um, outline, so I'll, I don't, go figure. <laughs> but I did, do you see how the little gnome's feet are different from what is on here? If you look here, he's got black feet, but this is a dark jacket, it's a denim jacket, and in order for this little gnome to be seen, I had to change the fabric. I mean, I had to change the thread. And that's what is really wonderful, whether you're working with a single needle or a multi-needle machine, you can do this. Even if you have, now these designs here are about, you almost have to have a six by something hoop um, because, and some of them are a little bit smaller. But in order to do that, then you would have to re-hoop and do it a second time. I did this in the 10 needle, and you see how I was able to do it in the, um, the 7 and 7 eighths by 16, or the longer hoop. This, um, I actually had the, had the hoop on the ironing board. Okay, <laughs> you can see I've got it. I've taken the stabilizer off. I wanted to leave this for you so you could kind of see what it is, but that's a real nice long hoop. And I could then get both of them in the same hoop. Now, <clears throat> I think that many of uh, my people that I'm hearing about, customers that come into my classes, I do hear quite often that they say to me, I don't want to do an applique embroidery. Or if you're going to do a quilt and you're doing an applique quilt, many of you, I've heard this over and over, only do it by hand or they, you shy away from it because you think it's more difficult. Well, if you look at this little guy, he's got applique wings here. His hat is applique, and actually the little um, bee bonnet or bee skirt, whatever he's got on there, is applique too. Very, very, very simple. How many of you have a scan and cut? Do you recognize this? This is a, um, let me bring it over here so you can see it. This is a, um, this happens to be the brother scan and cut, and you can see the little wings that are on here. Um, Let's see if I got my paper on here so well it's hard to come off. But you can see, if I flip it off here, I cut out, I, I just printed the little wings. I put them on my scan and cut. I ran it through the scan and cut, and voila, I now have it saved as a scan and cut design. Then the next step is to take my fabric, which I believe I have some here. Yep, these were the little wings. You can see that are over here. And on a fabric mat, this is not a fabric mat, this is for scanning the design. Then on the fabric mat, which is a different color than this, I just lay this down and it does have the Linda Z fusible um, applique that I uh, press on the back. And I highly recommend if you've got these Laura Star irons, they are, they're not that big, and do you see how I can get that into the actual hoop? You don't want to touch the, the, um, you know, the hoop itself, but you can actually press that down. First, you're going to press the applique fuse onto the back of the fabric. Then you're going to take this fabric that's got the applique, see it's paper, the paper side goes down and goes towards the fabric, and then this is the right side of the fabric, this is the wrong side. You're going to take the paper side and fuse it to the wrong side of the fabric. 
with your Laura Star, just like this. And those of you that don't have a Laura Star, get something like this. I know we have these Teflon um, press, I love this one, I've had it forever and it works really well. And it, because you're gonna need high heat. You do not want uh, steam, you want dry heat, and you want it to be very hot, as hot as you, your iron can stand it. And that's why this is really good to press over it so you don't um, you know, burn anything. Now, if you don't have that, um, Floriani has a wonderful press cloth. I know OESD does too. And you could put that over your fabric. But you can see I have the fabric side down. <clears throat> the, the wrong side is facing up. I take my applique fuse. I press it, I put it across, I cut a piece of fabric that'll go, um, you know, that'll um, be measured for the size of the piece that I have of fabric, and I really press it very firmly. Now, if you don't have a Laura Star, let's see if I've got here, this is wonderful. You can take one of these mats, and again, with your own other iron at home, you can press it like this. Now, I know I'm giving you a lot of little steps, but these are the little tips that really do make a difference when you're doing this. Um, OESD does make a product, too. I think it's called Soft Web, and there's some other products out there, too. But we have found, those of you that have been in our applique classes, this applique fusible is the most reasonable. We buy it directly from the manufacturer, and it really works because what it does is it's got, see this shiny paper? That's, that's the back of it. But I'm gonna take that off once and see how that's kind of shiny. Can they catch, can you see that in the camera? See how that's kind of shiny? This is fusible now. And this fusible will go down onto your fabric to do the applique. So it's really, um, it's just a really easy, quick applique that I think you'll find is very durable. Um, on this, this little shirt or this little jacket, if you notice, and these are digitizers that did, I love OESD's digitizing, by the way. They are, you can tell they're professional graphic digitizers. They've obviously been trained very well. And you can see on these, this little guy with his little wings here, this is a raw edge. Now I like that. I think that gives it a little fun gnomey look, whereas his hat is not, that's fabric but that has been embroidered over, but there is no raw edge there. They actually um, applied and did the stitch around it. But if you don't like that raw edge, which I do, you could then take it to your machine and do a blanket stitch around it or whatever. Because I've had people tell me, I don't like raw edge applique. So if you don't, there's things you can do to fix it. I think it's part of the design. Um, you can tell the designer had a wonderful feeling. Um, these little bees that are out here, the designer probably wouldn't have used this on a real dark jacket like this, but I really wanted to put something on here. And I used the um, metallic thread for the Let's Be Friends. I used metallic in the, the uh, feet. And the little bees, every now and then I've got some metallic somewhere. Uh, the hearts are in metallic. Easy, simple to do. Now, this is a very stretchy denim fabric. So if you're doing a stretchy fabric, before you even start to put the applique on, you'll want to prepare your garment. And in order to do that, because this was a little hard to get in there, I mean, it, it, you could hoop it, but because there's a lot of heavy seams in there, what I did, because you can see this fit actually went this way, it went right on here. Um, I took this perfect stick, and many of you have heard me say that, you know, I do a lot of uh, garments with perfect stick because it, first of all, it's very easy, it's very quick. I just roll it out, put it, um, cut it to the size of my hoop a little bit. You know, I keep about a half an inch or an inch, maybe, maybe two inches around there at the most. Make a nice cut with your paper scissors and you've got your piece back here. I'll do one so you can see these, pardon? Left, okay, I'll move this over so you can see it here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't need too much. That's what I hear a lot of people doing. They really, they go through and they cut a lot of extra fat of the stabilizer. And you don't wanna do that. You, if you get too much around the outside border of your hoop, and this is if you're doing a quilted um, quilt block 
or whether you're doing a jacket or whether you're doing it on a placemat or whatever you would be using. The, I, you see how much I've got? Just about an inch maybe around all of them. And then what I'm going to do, i take this out because I want you to see it. I'll get rid of this one. And I'm going to take this with, does anybody know what side I'm going to put up? Come on, <laughs> raise your hands. <laughs> you know you're going to put the paper side up, right? And then we're going to put this down into the hoop. So now this is the paper side. If I turned it the other way, like this, this is the fuzzy side, and it's not correct. You want the paper side up. And um, let me move this mat so you can see what I'm doing here. I think it would be really helpful. I do this quite often on some of our embroidery projects, but I want you to really understand why we're doing this. I think it'll help you a lot. So look at how I've got that over there. And I kind of smooth it out, make it, you know, I can go a little bit more over this side, a little bit more this way. Then I take my hoop, and because this is quite a long hoop, and I didn't, what I'd want to do now is release it a little because I've tightened it up real good. And one of the things that comes with this machine, and usually they have it right on there, I don't see it right now, is a little, um, it's a little tightener that's fabulous. It fits right into the, um, well, here, let me take it out and show you. It fits right into this, um, you know, straight edge of your hoop. And then what you can do is you can loosen it. See, if I'm doing this with my fingers, see how hard it is? And what it what does it do when you start to have anything hard when you're doing a project? What does it do for you? Forget it. I'm not going to finish it. It's one of the UFOs, right? Isn't that usually what happens? So we try to make it a little bit easier and get you these little tips. And brother and baby lock come with this little screwdriver that you can put into. It's a little round gray and it just boop, 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 turns it, and it just makes it such a pleasure to um, screw and tighten your fabrics. But let me show you what I want to do here, because I think this will give you an idea. Now, do you see how I put that down with all my fingers and my, my, my uh, wrist? Now, do you see I've got that down? Now, what's the next step? Why do you think I have all these tools out here? <laughs> there, it, you could use a simple little seam ripper, that's one thing. We have tons of these little mini, you can't have enough of these, and that's why I brought this out. Um, they're very inexpensive, they come in all different colors. Um, yeah, I'll show them that too. This is another, <laughs> oh, that's all right. This is another one that I'm gonna show you. But these little seam rippers are really nice to have. This is my favorite. This is a by Annie uh, Stiletto. It's very sharp, but it's great for going, you know, she has a lot of those heavy binding things that you go, and it's beveled here, so it's real easy to hold. But what am I gonna use it for? And this I love, because it's got so many different pieces. It's got the seam ripper on this side. It's got the, this is really on there tight. It's got the stiletto. Let's take my, um, my word for it on the other side. So you could use either side. I like the stiletto with a real sharp point. Now watch, I'm going from this corner, I'm gonna just make an X in the middle. You see how I'm doing that? And I'm sure you've seen me do this before, but I want you to really get used to it and see how easy this is to just rip off, go into the next one, take the little point here, do the same thing, rip it off, go into the next point, rip it off. Now what are you gonna have when all of these pieces come off of here. You're gonna have a very sticky surface, which is what you want. You wanna have that real nice sticky surface so that you can get in there and get to the um, edge of your, your hoop. You wanna go right up to the edge of the hoop. You wanna fill the whole thing up with your embroidery. Now, this is your middle. If you don't have a machine like these have with a camera, you can go and get a, um, many of your hoops come with a place for marking, but you would want to mark, and I did mark here. In fact, you can see it a little bit still. There's a little chalk on here, the middle, and I use this as my middle, and I always make a middle mark in the, in the center. 
Then what I do is I fold it down with the right side against the fabric, and <clears throat> I mean the wrong side with the fabric, and then I center it and I press the fabric out. Simple and easy. Now, what if you don't have a big hoop like that? What are you gonna do? There are some other things that you may use that I think are just fabulous. And how many have used the new power mesh? I love it. It's absolutely fabulous. It's, uh, it's taking the place of no-show mesh, and I use the fusible whenever I have anything like this that's real stretchy. Then if you have got a woven fabric that you're using, now that would be maybe a denim jacket too, but never would stretch. It's very definitely a strong woven without any stretch whatsoever. The heat and stay fusible would work very, very well for that. And this, you know, that I've shown you already is for the applique part. Now, what do we do with the top of this garment? Anybody know? <laughs> we want to use water soluble. Now, I will tell you on this, because I'm doing a lot of little different things with the, um, uh, the appliques, many times when I'm doing that, I won't put a water soluble on them. I put it on here, but I didn't put it on here. It, it kind of depends on what you're doing, but for the majority of the time, I'll use a water soluble. Now, let's get started with what we're doing here. You can actually get this, I believe, this was my fun one. Where Can they see it here, Nick? Is that better? Um, this actually is the, uh, isn't this cute? It's a little frame that would be just absolutely darling with, uh, and it says, welcome friend. I think I'd put that in a darker color so you could really see it. But again, that's your creativity where you can go ahead and choose what you want. Then what I love that OESD does with their designs, they have actually done the applique. And you see how they've done the um, applique patterns? But I'm gonna show you something a little bit different that they in other places do not do. See the mirrored pattern? This is the same applique only it's mirrored. And why would you need it mirrored? Uh, because you're, if you place it on the back side or the front side, if you're, if you're cutting it out exactly the way it's gonna go down on the fabric, it would be the, this side. But if you're not, and you're doing it from the reverse side, then you definitely would have to mirror your design and reverse it, it unless they're totally accurate, which, you know, totally the same, which these are not. Do you see how this one's a little more curved? See how it's got a little bit different over here? I'm gonna show you on the actual fabric, I mean on the machine, um, something that I think is worth pointing out. Do you see what I've done here? This was the printer, and they get that real quick, easy right here. And this right here, be very careful that you do not um, use um, like a fit to page or that you're not scaling the design. Because when you do applique, you want it to be accurate. So if you don't have a, you know, you, you can't write none or you can't type it in, what you need to do is write 100%. Just do 100% not, not fit to page because that sometimes will be like 96 or 98 and that will change your applique. So let me show you on the machine itself. And I guess, Nick, you want me over here for this one, right? <laughs> this is your screen. I have put this OESD, and I do a little thing. Um, when I buy the, the yearly, which by the way, I should explain that right now, is going down in price on the 15th. We are actually normally, I believe it's like $1,000, and it's gonna go down to $749 starting May 15th. So we hope you'll come and get the yearly, but if you don't, there's some other benefits for it. But if you just wanna buy one particular design, you can do that too. And that's this little happy gnome guy. It's called, again, the Honey Bee Gnomes, and it's only $44.99. You can uh, let us know. It should be on our website, but if it's not, call our store, and we'll be glad to mail it out to you. But you can see I put the USB stick in, and they always come with the USB. You don't have to worry anymore about those uh, CDs or the downloads. The downloads can be very cumbersome. Um, I know many of you are very computer literate. We are around here too, or they are. <laughs> I won't say I'm always, but the um, the downloads can, you know, if you have a firewall, um, many of us, many of our customers have told us that the downloads can be, especially if it's a huge file, they have a lot of trouble. They have to unblock it and it goes into spam or junk. And um, anyway, this USB has just been a wonderful thing. And they're trusting that you know that these are copyrighted and you only use them yourself. 
So we have a USB stick in our USB slot. I'm gonna to touch this where all the files are. I'm gonna go find the honeybee ones, which it's called um, honeybee gnomes. And now I'm gonna to touch the design part. It does have an SVG file too, because in order to do this, I wouldn't have had to have scanned it. It did have an SVG. I can just go ahead and download it and then put that that little USB into my scan and cut. And those of you that have scan and cuts know what I'm talking about. And then it will just cut it out for you. Now, it's not a real cumbersome design to cut out, so you can do it on your own if you needed to. But the scan and cuts are just built for, you know, real easy, quick things. Now I'm going to the other. I kind of wait for all of those things come up. And you can see the first one was the very first one with the little guy with the honey pot. And then what I did here, I'm going to go ahead and set it. But before I set it, I want to rotate it because of the fact, remember, this is going up and down and I put a second design below him. So now watch what I'm doing. I'm going to turn him right here and then I'm going to go ahead and bring him all the way up to the top. Okay, see how I'm moving him as far as he'll go? Then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to add the other design, which is that same little um, honeybee. And in this one, though, this will give you an idea of, again, PES or whatever format your machine would read is what you would put on there. And then I love this Let's Be Friends, the bee. And because this jacket was so dark, my bee is a little gray. I don't know if there are gray bees. Maybe it's a king bee. I'm not sure what they are, but it's, it's definitely not a black one. All right, and now I'm going to um, I'm going to edit this too. And what I'm going to do, because see where the let's is? It's over his feet. So what do I have to do? All I have to do is just bring him down a little. Let's bring him back here. I don't want, to, don't want him too far down. And I can just say, okay, I'm going to end the edit. You see how my machine is moving? go to embroidery, and I'm all set and ready to go. It's got all of my numbers and everything ready. Now, if you have a single needle machine, what is great about a multi-needle is if you're doing a lot of these, I'm actually doing, um, and we have a customer who's making a gnome quilt that I think is just gonna be, oh, just wonderful. So she's making a lot of blocks. And when you're doing a lot of blocks, you want those threads all set up. And it takes you one time to set them up, I don't cut my threads, I turn them and tie them and pull them through and they're the easiest way to, to thread your machine. So if you are just doing one and you have a, a single needle machine, what you can do is you can go ahead and really look at the colors that you wanna use. I suggest that you lay out all of your threads ahead of time. Get number one through seven or whatever it is that you're gonna be doing, it'll tell you on there what colors to use, and then you can decide, hmm, I don't like that, I think I'd substitute this. I would change this in the future. I think I would even make it a little more of a beigey color. I'm, I don't know, I, I would just do a little something on there. Um, then what you wanna do is, of course, read through your directions, print out your applique, and look at how wonderful this is, how they go through. I'm not gonna go through step by step with you. We do that a lot in our embroidery club. But I do think that most of you would be able to follow these directions. They're very, very simple. Um, there's a couple little tips and things that I gave, and that, that's one of the reasons why I like to do this. Um, I gotta show you my newest tool. Can I, do I have time for that, Nick? Look at what this is doing. <laughs> I just love this. I, I've got one of these by every machine now. And where's my bobbin? I probably dropped it on the floor. I did. And so rather than having to bend over, look what happens. It's a magnetic tool, one of the smartest things. All you, how many times you're sitting there sewing your pins go down and you go, whoop, there it is. <laughs> so um, this is another little thing. Um, this is a this is the tool. I wish I knew. Teresa, can you tell me? Teresa's over here. <laughs> Do you know the name? No, I don't. I call it, um, you can call it Linda's, Linda's love. <laughs> Oh, magnetic pin. What? What's the first name? Telescoping magnetic. Telescoping. Oh yeah, because if you're sitting, you don't need it as long. If you're standing, 
and you're shorter like me, you might need it longer, <laughs> okay? Anyway, this is a great little tool, and I love that the fact that they've had it. I keep all of my tools in that stash and store. Many of you have heard me say this over and over. Um, this is a little tool that comes with the um, the ten needle, and I just love it. It's a great thing because I'm I'm threading all of these machines all at once, and all I have to do is quickly go through and put the thread here, and then touch the thread button, and it automatically threads it. So some pretty simple things. I think I've covered everything. They're probably mad at me because I went over again. <laughs> but I wanted to show you some really fun things. Um, I'll try and do a little bit of gnome things again next week because we've done, we've got other projects that we're doing with these that are really fun. These I've used a lot when I, like I said, when I'm marking, this is that Bowen. Debbie says it much better. How do you say it in French, uh, Nick? Nicolas? It's Bowen. Bowen. I'd say it nicer. Bon. Bon. <laughs> okay. B O H I N. Anyway, I'd say Boin, <laughs> but I don't think that's the right way. But this is a great marker and it's really easy to use when you want to find the center. Um, last but not least, um, if you are purchasing the entire um, yearly, which I encourage you to do, but many of you are just starting to get into embroidery. So you know, you may not think to do that, but these, when when you get this, you get a little um, CD holder, which I just love. I mark mine which month it is in case it falls out, not the CD, the USB. But it's not just these designs on this. It's many more than what you see here. They give you a smattering of what's there, and I will guarantee you that their digitizing is phenomenal. Many times I come up with digitizing from some designs and I go, oh, I just don't like that. <laughs> and I have to run it through my Floriani software. Um, this, you really don't have to. I mean, I do quite often because I just want to make sure I've got it the way I want it. Um, if you don't want to go to the full monthly club, like I said, you can buy this for $44.99 for the, um, just the, um, the one. It will have all the designs in there. In fact, you can kind of see here, so I'll finish up with that. I will um, return, and I'll say OK to cancel, and I will um, go back to home. And now you're going to see that little USB. And look at all these designs in here. Every single one of these folders are in that USB. So we have the honeybee. We have spring is in the air. Um, many, many different designs that are really, really fun. And you wait for them to come up, look at this cute little birdhouse, and you're ready to sew. So thanks so much for joining us today, and don't I have some more gifts? I think so. I have some really cool uh, 2021 calendars that have got wonderful quilt designs on them. They're free, so I hope you call the store. Nothing like free. I mean, why not? And don't think you might not get the, um, you not may not be one of the first. We've had somebody call and say that they couldn't come in to get it and then give it to somebody else. And so somebody called three days later and they got the designs. This is one of my favorite books. It's Double Dozen by Kay England. And it has got the most beautiful blocks in it. Um, I just think they're fabulous. I think they're like they're $12, $13 and it's free. So um, we have a, some surprises for you. So I hope you'll call and enjoy the week and hope to see you next week. Thanks, everyone.